world in Africa. Na mimi nimejisikia hizo kwaya nyingi, kwaya nyingi za ajabu nimeziona hapa Afrika. I have never heard so many wonderful choirs. Sijawahi kuona wala kusikia nyimbo nyingi na wanakwaya wengi kama vikundi vya kwaya vingi kama Afrika. Si msema amina. Africa. Hapa Afrika viko vingi na vikundi vingi vingi. It's not only inspirational. Si tu kwamba inahuisha but for those singing lakini hao wanaoimba they need to take those deep breaths wanajifunza kuvuta hewa kutoka ndani and their health is going to improve wanakuwa na afya njema ambayo imeboreka so keep singing out there wende na kuimba wanakwaya amen our environment and our fresh air is beneficial for our whole well-being mazingira yetu na hii hewa safi ina manufaa sana kwa afya zetu na ustawi and it can either contribute to sickness or health tahadhari tu ni kwamba inaweza ikachangia kuwa na afya njema au ikasababisha afya ikadoroma so life in the open air is good for our body and our mind kwa hiyo maisha kama hapa hivi kwenye uwazi namna hii inasaidia kuboresha afya zetu pia na akili it's god's medicine to restore our health. Ni tiba kutoka kwa Mungu kwa ajili ya kuboresha afya zetu. And pure air. Hewa safi. And good water. Maji mazuri. And sunshine. Mwanga wa jua. The beautiful surroundings of Mazingira nature. Mazingira mazuri ya asili. These are the means of restoring the sick to health. Hii ni namna nzuri sana ya kuboresha mtu mgonjwa kutoka kwenye ugonjwa kwenda kwenye afya njema. Not a little pill my friends. Sio kile kidonge rafiki yangu. It's nature. Ni asili. So every day. Kila siku. Exercise in the sunshine and fresh air. Fanya mazoezi katika mwanga wa jua. Air is a precious gift for from heaven. Hewa ni zawadi nzuri ya thamani kutoka mbinguni. And it will even soothe your nerves. Itakusaidia vizuri sana kwa ajili ya mfumo wako wa ufahamu. The more we live in harmony with God's health principles. Na kwa kila tunapoishi kwa kadri ya kupatana na mpango wa kwanza wa Mungu. The healthier we will be. Ndipo tutakapozidi kuwa na afya nzema. So here's your prescription. Tiba yako ya leo Walk in the sunshine. Tembea katika mwanga wa jua. With your head erect. Kichwa kikiwa kimenyooka. Your shoulders back. Mabega nyuma and take deep breaths. And remember, Kumbuka, lifestyle is the key to living longer, healthier and happier. So here are some teeny tips for you. Walk outside in the fresh air daily. Open those windows. Air out your bedding regularly. Practice taking those deep Alafu breaths. Alafanya mazoezi ya kuvuta hewa kutoka ndani. Until it becomes a habit. Ifanye iwe ni tabia yako. Now I'm absolutely amazed at those of you in Mwanza. Nina 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 shangazwa sana na wale ambao wako Mwanza. You have been sitting here some of you since 6:30 since 7:30 this morning. Tumekuwa tumekaa hapa kuanzia saa moja na nusu asubuhi. And you're cheerful and happy. Na mko na furaha kabisa na huku mmechanganyika. But I think it's time for you to get up out of your seat. Nafikiri ni muda kwa sasa Mama, smameni tafadhali, smameni. Smameni tujifunze kitu. And those of you that are watching by Hope Channel. Na yapo mtaangalia huko katika Hope Channel. All over Africa. Na yapo smameni. Stand up. Smameni. And let's take some deep breaths. Tujifunze kitu kidogo kuweza kutoka ndani. Let's breathe in through the nose. Haya hebu inama kidogo na uvute kwa kupitia pua yako. Expand those lungs. Hebu nenda kapanua ya mapafu yako. Breathe out through the mouth. Alafu uhakikishe yamepanuka vizuri. Breathe in through the nose. Haya Vuta hewa kutoka kwenye mapafu. Nenda kapanue mapafu. And out through the mouth. Alafu toa hewa kupitia mdomo. And one more time breathe in through the nose. Vuta hewa kupitia mapua. And out through the mouth. Na ukimaliza toa kupitia mdomo. I think you ought to get a little exercise with it. Let's go. Come on, Mwanza. Let's exercise. A little faster. Come on, a little more. Come on, I know you can do it. Let's go. Endelea, endelea. Very good. Endelea, endelea, endelea. Okay. Endelea. Let's slow down. Endelea, endelea. Let's slow down. Endelea, kidogo, Take kidogo that sasa. deep breath. Kidogo, kidogo sasa. Breathe in through the Uta, nose. Uta, hewa, kwa Out kwa through the mouth. Unatoa kwa mdomo. Shake those hands. Endelea, kaya, and relax. Kwa 
This is God's health assurance plan. So God bless you as you follow God's plan. Because his plan is the best plan. God bless you. Ufunuo matumaini Tumaini la leo, kesho na hata milele Nipende kuwakaribisha tena katika vipindi vietu jioni ya leo Na tunapuelekea mwisho mwisho na huduma zetu za siku hii ya leo Nipende kuwakaribisha kwaya Tutakuwa na kwaya tatu mfuulizo zitakazo imba hapa Kwaya kwanza ni kwaya vijana rusha mjini kati Ninaona hawa wanakuja na nyuma yao watajipanga kwa ya sala sala kutoka kule jijini Dar es Salaam na baada ya waimbaji hao tutamaliza na kwa ya Makao kutoka hapa South Nyanza Conference kwa ya, ya Makao Nipende kumshukuru Mungu kwa niaba yako na tunapenda kumshukuru Mungu sana kwa sababu ya vile ambavyo anaendelea kutuhudumia. Utaona ya kwamba Mungu ana mpango na afya zetu na ndio maana amemtuma Mama Mark Finley ili aweze kutujulisha nini ambacho tunaweza tukakifanya. Nimependa somo la leo kwamba unatakiwa ukae, uvute hewa, upate upate hewa safi. Kumbe wakati mwingine kukaa migombani sio ushamba na kutaka kukimbilia mjini Dar es Salaam ambapo pengine hakuna migomba pengine ndio ushamba sasa. Kwa hiyo ni vizuri wanakuwa hawazeki kwa sababu wanavuta hewa. E, kwa ni vizuri kwa katika maeneo ambayo utaweza kupata hewa nzuri na hilo ndilo somo la afya ambalo limekwisha kupita. Tukuacho kibarikiwa na jumbe mbalimbali mbali za kwa hizi tatu mfululizo na baada ya hapo tutakujuza nini kinafuata. Usiondoke katika runinga yako vipindi bado ni moto moto na vipindi vinaendelea kwa ajili ya wokovu wako na wokovu wangu nam wokovu wetu. Karibuni. Yeah.
Okay, so that's, that's one. There's two more.
stadi wa hali ya juu no. lakini zimeimbwa zikiwa zina jumbe mbalimbali jina la Bwana nalitukuzwe amen tunaposimama jiona leo kwa ajili ya wimbo wa ufunguzi uh, pastor mchome tujulishe pengine somo la leo linasemaje na yule anayependa kuangalia na ambaye ametulia katika kituo mahali fulani asikie Mungu anataka kumwambia mimi tena katika jioni ya leo naam ndugu mtazamaji jioni ya leo tena tutakuwa na somo zuri sana somo makini no. somo linalosema maisha mapya kwa ajili ya milenia mpya katika ufunuo maisha mapya kwa ajili ya milenia mpya katika ufunuo na somo hili haliletu na mtu mwingine isipokuwa ni daktari mchungaji na mwinjilisti Mark Finlay ndiye anayekuja kusema nasi dakika hizi tunakupongeza wewe ambaye umeshafanya maamuzi ya kumfuata Yesu Kristo kwa njia ya ubatizo na wewe ambaye umemleta mtu kwa Yesu Mungu akubariki sana. Amen. Somo la leo tena likusogeze karibu na Kristo, likusogeze karibu na Yesu na ufanye maamuzi ya kumfata. Tusimame tunapoimba wimbo mkutano, wimbo wa ufunuo wa matumaini. Karibuni katika jiona leo.
I am praising God for this day. We have seen the miracles of God here. 1,089 people were baptized in Lake Victoria today. Praise God. But all over Tanzania, we are getting baptismal report after baptismal report. And our meetings are going international. Dr. Alex writes from the Ukraine that he's watching in the former Soviet Union. And, and at Cam College, at Dar es Salaam, the, princi the principal is so impressed with Mama Finley's health talks, he said to his students, you should all live like Seventh-day Adventists. <laughs> And then in Nganazi, there at Bihar Amula, there's 125 people that come. 
And there's a little boy that always comes and sits on a stump and listens to the word of God. You know, when God moves by his Holy Spirit, miracles happen. At uh, Katomi in Bukombe, there, a lady who was chained in witchcraft brought her charms, and you can see, if you can see the picture, they burned them up and they are now ashes. In Arusha city, there is hope for the city. Entrepreneurs and uh, motorcyclists and taxi drivers meet by the hundreds right on the side of the road to listen to the Word of God. In Manganazu, Maganzo. Maganzo, nine members. We only have nine members there. That's up in Shingango. And it is 120 visitors we have. Nine members? 120 visitors? That, that's a miracle of God. At the University of Dodoma. The students watch from the cafeteria. They eat their supper and hear the message of God. And at Batuma Teachers College right here in Mwanza, 80 students are glued to the screen as they eat their supper. Now, so many reports of baptism are coming in that we cannot report them all. At Entozo in Bariadi, we had nine baptized today. At Jamba, 19 baptized today. At the Kato Ungwa Adventist Secondary School, 19 were baptized this morning. And every place we look, God is moving powerfully. Young people being baptized. Adults being baptized. 26 were baptized at Moshi. 63 baptized at Mariatu. At, at Bariati. In Simiyu. And uh, five baptists at Kibiadu. Darasalam, Kibiadu. But here, you're going to love this. 71 baptized in Tonga. 20 Maasai baptized. In uh, Mambo. Don't, didn't you love that Maasai music tonight? And so... Amen. Amina. And welcome 20 new Maasai brothers and sisters. Wave to them tonight. God is enlarging the family. Let's pray that Jesus will be with us tonight. How many want a special blessing tonight? You want a special blessing. It's the end of the day. You've been faithful in staying. 
And because of that, God is going to give you a special blessing. So let's pray. Father in heaven, you have promised to those that are faithful to the end, your special blessing is upon them. We open our hearts just now for the blessings of heaven to rain down on this stadium in Jesus' name. Amen. My topic tonight is Revelation's New Life. You know, in the United States, if you're looking for somebody to employ for a job, you often put an advertisement in the paper. Many students who've gone to university all year look through the newspapers to get a good job in the summer so they can pay their tuition. One student looked and looked and he saw an advertisement that would pay very good money. He would make enough money to pay his college tuition. But the job was difficult. He had to go up to Canada and work with very rough people that were out in the woods cutting down trees. Now these rough men were not Christians. They were rough, muscular, and tough. They were drinking alcohol, cursing and swearing. Now this college student went to a Christian college. And his friend said, you better never go up to that work, take that job. Those rough men will just tear you apart. Those rough men will ridicule you all summer. Once they find out you're a Christian, they'll embarrass you. The young man needed the money. So he went there to work, work in the forests, work cutting down trees. At the end of the summer, he made his money and he came back to the school and his friends said, how did you do? How did you ever survive? And he said it was very easy. It was easy. Easy to survive with those drinking men. Easy to survive with those cursing men. How did you do it? It was easy. They never found out I was a Christian. They never found out. This young man was neutral. He was too afraid to declare he was a Christian. He was neutral. In the last days of earth's history, God is calling every one of us to take a stand. There is no neutrality in this final conflict. Revelation chapter 22 verse 17 says, Whoever will, 
Yeyote atakai. Let him take the water of life freely. Anaweza kunywa maji haya bure. Jesus says, "Come." Yes, wana semani. Come and accept my love. Jo kubali upendo wana. Come receive my power. Ebunjo poke anguvu yangu. Come and take a stand for me. Ebunjo simame kwa jili yangu. Now, how do we take a stand for Jesus? Sasa je, tunaweza je kusimama kwa jili yangu? What is the symbol that we're taking a public stand for Christ? Ni sharagani ila yana. In Revelation chapter one, verse five and six, the Bible says, "To him who loved us and washed us from our sins with his blood." But what is the symbol that we're taking a public stand for Jesus? What is the symbol that we've been washed in the blood of Christ? Baptism is a symbol of our commitment, our loyalty, and our allegiance to Christ. When more than a thousand of you were baptized today, when you stood in that water, when you went under the water, and, and came up, and when hundreds and thousands watched, you said we are taking a stand for Christ and the Bible says Jesus says he that confesses me before men him I'll confess before my father in heaven baptism is the symbol that we're taking our stand for Christ. It was Jesus who said in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20 Jesus said go therefore and, bapt and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the earth. Jesus said to his disciples, as you preach the word of God, invite people to make decisions Jesus said lead them to know my grace lead them to experience my forgiveness lead them to receive my power and Jesus said in every generation in every century down through the years I will be with you he said I'm with you always. He said invite people to make that decision. When we are baptized, we, take, we declare our allegiance. When we are baptized, we take a public stand. When we are baptized, we step out of the crowd. When we are baptized, we say Say I belong to Christ. When we are baptized, we show whose side we're on. But some say our church sprinkles babies. Others say our church pours a little water on top of the head. How was Jesus baptized? Wouldn't you? agree with me tonight that Jesus is our example. In Mark chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible says that it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in Jordan. 
Jesus was fully immersed by John. Yesu aliingizwa ndani kikamilifu mwili wote na Yohana ndani ya maji. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 1 katika Marko sura ya kwanza that as Jesus went into the water ya kwamba Yesu alipoingia ndani ya maji he was not sprinkled hakunyunyiziwa. He was fully immersed. Alizikwa mwili mzima. He came up out of the water akatoka kwenye maji and the heavens were opened and the spirit of god came down like a dove upon jesus and a voice from heaven came said this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased when jesus was baptized the holy spirit came into his life to give him strength and power over temptation. How many of you have already been baptized by immersion? Can I see your hands? You've already been baptized. Jesus promises you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Once you are baptized, the gift of the Holy Spirit enters your life. And that gift of the Holy Spirit is for two reasons. One to strengthen you. One to enable you to face the temptations of Satan. And second, to enable you to be a powerful witness for Jesus. So the Holy Spirit descended upon Christ to give him supernatural power to face temptation. So say to Jesus, thank you Jesus that you've given me your Holy Spirit. Thank you Jesus that the Holy Holy Spirit is mine. Some people are always praying. Jesus, give me the Holy Spirit. Jesus, give me the Holy Spirit. But when we were baptized, Christ promised to give us the Holy Spirit. So we come to Jesus and we say, Jesus, you promised at my baptism to give me the Holy Holy Spirit. I believe the promises of God. How many of you believe the promises of God? How many believe the promises of God? Did he give you the Holy Spirit of baptism? Did he keep his word? Certainly he kept his word. Now there's a second reason, the second thing that happened to Jesus at baptism. First in Acts 10 verse 38. The Bible says that Jesus baptism. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. So when God gave you the Holy Spirit at baptism, He gave you power over temptation. Now if you've not yet been baptized, make that decision tonight. Somebody says I'm too weak to be baptized. Come to Jesus. Claim the gift of His Spirit. Ask him for that spirit to fill your life. Walk into the water. Take a public stand for Jesus. Now the second thing that happened at Jesus' baptism. The Father spoke to him. And said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It's one thing to please your father, it's another thing to please your mother. It's one thing to please a friend. But when those of you were baptized today, when you walked into that water, 
God was smiling on you. And he was saying, this is my son. This is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. And when hundreds of you walk into the water of baptism next Sabbath, when thousands viewing this program via satellite are baptized next Sabbath, Jesus repeats your name and he says this is my beloved son this is my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased this is what Jesus says believers down through the centuries have walked through the waters of baptism they've taken a full stand for Christ their sins have been forgiven they've received new power they've felt the warmth of pleasing Jesus the first African that we record baptism in the Bible was the Ethiopian eunuch he was studying the Bible he was studying prophecy he discovered Jesus in the Bible he was a Sabbath keeper he believed the prophecies about Jesus Jesus. Philip joined him at that chariot. And that Ethiopian, that African, was so excited about his baptism that he said to Philip, here's water here's water I want to be baptized and Philip said to him if you believe with all your heart you can and, and the Ethiopian said I believe Jesus is the son of God and the Bible says Acts chapter 8 verse 36 to 39 Philip told the driver of the chariot wait here and Philip led that African down into that and Philip raised his hand and Philip said nakubatisa kwa jina baba na moana na roho matakatifu I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and Philip baptized that African. Na Philip wakambatiza yule mu Africa. Praise God, the gospel came to Africa. Bana mungu atokuzwe injini ni kuja Africa. You know that Ethiopian. Unajua yule mu Ethiopia mkushi. Could not wait. Hakuweza kungoja. I saw people today. Niliona watu leo. That could not wait. Ambao hawange weza kungoja. They were running to the water. Walikuwa kikimbia kuelekea kwenye maji. When God comes unto your life. Mungu anapo ingia maisha mwaka. When Jesus changes your life. Yesu anapo banilisha maisha. You want to run to the water. Unashauku ya kukimbia kwenye maji. Let me take you tell you about an amazing baptism this amazing baptism took place for five Russian sailors these Russian sailors got a book the name of that book was Great Controversy where they were on a submarine for six months that submarine was under the ice under the ice in the Arctic Circle these Russian sailors 
had nothing to do. So they read. And they read. They read the book Great Controversy. It's about Jesus. It's about the second coming of Christ. It's about the Bible Sabbath. That led them to start studying their Bibles. And these Russian sailors underneath the ice in the Arctic Circle said we're coming to Jesus we believe he's coming again we want to keep his commandments they lived in Siberia when their submarine came back to Siberia they came to the Adventist pastor they said pastor we must be baptized we accept Jesus we believe the truth of the Bible we believe Jesus is coming again we believe in the Bible Sabbath the pastor studied the Bible with them. He said, when the ice melts in the summertime, it's February now, there's a meter and a half of ice on the lake. When the ice melts, I'll baptize you. The five Russian sailors said, we will not wait. They took axes. They chopped a meter and a half of ice. They made steps in the ice. This was on a Sunday. They were going to be baptized the next Sabbath. But every night the ice would freeze over where they had chopped it about an inch and a half. The, the, the temperatures were freezing. Every day, the pastor came and chopped that ice. And on, and on Sunday, the pastor began to think. I won't be able to stay in the water that long to baptize five people. It, it, it's going to be too cold. So he said he got an idea. On Monday, he chopped the inch of ice, went into the pool, dipped under the cold water, Stood, stood up. The pastor did that for five or six days in a row. And on Sabbath, with the wind blowing, freezing cold, they walked down those ice steps and the pastor baptized those five Russian soldiers, sailors in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When Jesus calls you, it is your moment to make the decision to follow Christ. These Russian soldiers weren't concerned about the ice. They didn't want to wait till the summer. Jesus had called them. Now, look at the truth about the Ethiopian's baptism. The Ethiopian accepted Christ. He was taking a public stand. He would come back to Africa and plant Christianity on this continent. Both the Ethiopian and Philip went down into the water. The Ethiopian was fully immersed. And the Ethiopian did not wait. When God calls us, it's not time to wait. Now the 
word for baptism in the Bible. Sasa neno hili it's an interesting word. If a woman would had a white piece of cloth, and she wanted to dye it blue, she'd take the whole piece, take the whole piece of cloth and immerse it in a blue dye. The blue cloth, cloth na hili vazi, the, the white cloth vazi yeupe, would become totally blue. Na kuwa blue kabisa. It must be totally immersed. Lazima kile kipande changuwa kizamishwa kikamilifu. That's what baptism means. Sasa ndipo neno hilo A full nipotokea. immersion. Ni kuzamisha kikamilifu. Why are we covered totally? Kwa nini tunafunikwa kabisa kikamilifu? The, the water covers my feet. Because my feet have led me astray. The water covers my hands. Because my hands have sinned. The water covers my heart. Because my heart has wandered from God. The water covers my eyes. Because my eyes have behold an evil thing. The water covers my ears. Because my ears have Listened to evil things. The water covers my mind. My head, because my mind has wandered from God. We are fully immersed. Because God wants us to be fully cleansed. One of the most famous places in the world that I've ever been. Is in the underground cities in Turkey. In, in the days of persecution. When the Christians were persecuted. They made cities under the ground. Ten thousand people could live in those cities. You could go eight stories down under the ground. My wife and I have taken groups through those narrow passageways. Darkness under the ground. But you know what we discovered? That the Christians had carved out baptismal pools where they could baptize by immersion. Because they wanted to be faithful to Jesus. Now what is the meaning of Bible baptism? Baptism. The Bible says in Romans 6 verse 3 and 4. Don't you know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with Christ Christ through baptism into death. That, that just as Christ was raised from the glory of the Father. We should walk in newness of life. So baptism is about death. When you walk into the water to be baptized and you go under the water you're dying to the old way of life. And the devil comes to you next week next month and he says, look what you did two weeks ago. Look what you did six months ago. Look what you did last year. And you begin feeling guilty because of your past. You say to the devil, that person died. They died in Lake Victoria. That 
person no longer lives. Yule mtu haishi tena. I am new in Jesus. Mimi ni mpya katika Yesu. I am new in Jesus. Mimi ni mpya katika Yesu. All of the past is gone. Yale ya, ya kale yote yamepita. All of the guilt is gone. Hati ya yote imepita. I've got a new name written down in glory. Ninalo jina jipya katika utukufu. Jesus wrote pardon after your name. Yesu anakupatia hilo jina. So baptism is a symbol of death. Hivyo baptizo ni kielelezo cha mauti ya ukufu. We go into the water. Tunaingia ndani ya maji. We go under the water. Tunaingia na kuzama ndani ya maji. We hold our breath. Tuna we die to the past and we are resurrected to the new life in Jesus. So three things about baptism. We die to the old sinful way. We come up to live the new life in Christ. We are totally immersed and our sins are cleansed. They are buried in the watery grave. And when we come up out of the water, the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We've taken a public stand for Jesus. And we live new life in Christ. There's a sparkle in our eyes. There's a smile on our face. There's a joy in our hearts. Because we have come to Jesus. Jesus. Our name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. And Jesus says, This man, this woman, is one of mine. Baptism does not mean you're perfect. It means you're committed to Jesus. Baptism is not the end of the Christian life. You'll continue to grow as a disciple in Christ. Baptism gives a new sense of freedom. We are free from guilt. Free from condemnation. Free from the old habits that bound us. Baptism brings a new sense of spiritual power into our lives. Now what what happens when we're baptized? First, every sin is forgiven. Now, somebody says, Aren't my sins forgiven when I confess them? Yes, they are. But have you remembered to confess every sin you've ever committed? Certainly not. So when we go into the baptismal pool, Jesus says, the sins you remembered to confess and the ones you never remembered to confess, they're all gone. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says, then Peter said, Let every one of you be baptized. Let every one be baptized. In the name of Jesus. For the remission of your sins. When we're baptized. The sins we remembered. The sins we didn't remember. They are forgiven. When we are baptized. Listen to the promise of Peter. Repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of sins and you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and your children and those that are far off. So Peter says in every generation those that are baptized will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now when God calls you to baptism make that decision to follow him.
Ufanye huo uamuzi kumfuata. When we are baptized, unapobatizwa, we become part of God's church. Unakuwa sehemu ya kanisa la Mungu. His Bible believing his, his Christ centered his commandment keeping his Sabbath observing his healthy lifestyle his worldwide seventh day Adventist church listen to what the Bible says Acts 2 verse 41 those who were received his word were baptized. the same day they were added to them 3,000 souls 3,000 were added to the church that day see when you're baptized some people have said to me when I'm baptized do I have to join a church? That's like saying when I have a baby does it have to be part of the family? Do some people try to get rid of their babies? and they leave them on the street as orphans if a baby is left on the street as an orphan it's likely to die when you're baptized you're not left as an orphan you become part of God's church you become part of God's family Sabbath you come to worship God every Sabbath you come to study the word of God and other brothers and sisters are there with you to encourage you in Acts chapter 2 verse 42 the Bible says that those that were baptized continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship they weren't baptized and just said goodbye when they were baptized they continued in the fellowship of the church when they were baptized they continued to walk in the truth the Bible says in Acts 2 verse 47 the Lord Lord added to the church those that were being saved. Now somebody says, how do I know that I'm ready for baptism? The Bible gives us steps. What steps should a person take before being baptized? First the Bible says, repent of your sin. What is repentance? It's being sorry enough for my sin that I don't want to do it anymore. Has God touched your heart? Do you want a new way of life? The second step is to believe that to believe that Jesus forgives you to believe that Jesus power changes you it's to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior the third step Jesus says go you therefore and make disciples of all nations teaching them everything I've commanded you so as you've been coming to these meetings you've been learning the teachings of the Bible as you've been meeting in a small group as you've been studying the Bible with a pastor or a lay person Jesus is calling you 
Kristo Yesu anafanya You're hivyo. sorry about your sins. Unaongozwa kusikitikia dhambi yako. You've accepted Christ as your savior. Unamkubali Yesu Kristo kama mwokozi wako. You've been learning the word of God. Umejifunza, umekuwa kujifunza. Wherever you are tonight. Kokote ambapo upo leo. Jesus is now calling you. Yesu leo anakuita. Jesus is now appealing to you. Yesu sasa anakuita wewe. Should a person ever be rebaptized? What if they were immersed once? Should they ever be re-immersed? There is an instance in the Bible in Acts the 19th chapter where people were baptized once by John the Baptist. They were immersed but they were baptized again. Here is the story Acts chapter 19, verse 2 to 5, Paul says, Did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believed? And they said, We've not even heard of the Holy Spirit. And so here's what Paul said. He said, I'll rebaptize you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is an important Bible doctrine. There are many that have been baptized. They are wonderful Christians. They are Baptists or Pentecostals. But they've never fully understood the truths of the Bible. They've never understood the Sabbath written with the finger of God. They've never understood the truth about their bodies being the temple of God. They've never understood the truth about death. They hear the truth of God's word. They sense that God is a special church on earth today. A Bible believing, Christ centered. Adventist Sabbath keeping church. Just like these believers in the book of Acts. They didn't know the fullness of truth. And they hear the call of God. They step out to be rebaptized. Now, who should ever be rebaptized? If you were baptized once, even as an Adventist and, and you drifted far far away from God you turned your back on Jesus you went out and lived in the world God is calling you tonight to make your decision to come back to Christ. One of the great signs of end time is this. Thousands who walked with Jesus and have walked away are coming back to Jesus. So God is calling you. Secondly, if you're a committed Christian and you were immersed but never understood the fullness of God's truth, God is calling you tonight. And if you were sprinkled or poured and never immersed, God is calling you tonight. How important is Bible baptism? Jesus said in John 3 verse 5 to Nicodemus I say to you except one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God what does it mean to be born of the spirit 
Inamaanisha nini kuzaliwa kwa roho? Means to be changed inside. Inamaanisha kubadilishwa ndani. What is to be born of water? Inamaanisha nini kuzaliwa kwa maji? It means to be baptized. Inamaanisha kubatizwa. Mark 16 verse 16. Marko sura ya 16 mstari wa 16. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Anasema yeye aaminie na kubatizwa ataokoka. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Anasema yeye aaminie na kubatizwa ataokoka. Now is the accepted time. Huu ndio wakati uliokubaliwa. Now is your time to make decision. Huu ndio wakati wako wa kuufanya uamuzi. Do not wait until it's too late. Usisubiri mpaka ukiwa umechelewa. We don't have the assurance of our next breath. Hatuna hakika ya pumzi yetu inayofuata. One car accident could take your life. Ajali moja ya gari yaweza kuchukua maisha yako. One Heart attack could take your life. Many people will wait and be eternally lost. But it is never too late. Never too late. Let me tell you about Peter. Peter's mother attended our meetings in Poland. Petro, mama yake Petro alihudhuria mikutano yetu pale Poland. And she would always say to me, na alikuwa akihudhuria wa pale kwa for my son. Akisema niombeeni mtoto wangu. Pray for my son. Niombeeni mtoto wangu. He doesn't know Jesus. Hamjui Yesu. He has some kind of satanic altar to Hitler in the house. Ana namna fulani za kishetani ambazo zinaendeleza katika jamii. Pray for my son. Niombeeni mwanangu. We prayed for that boy. Tukamwombea yule kijana. Prayed for that boy. Tukamwombea yule kijana. His mother took home our tapes or our lectures and gave them to Peter. Mama yake huyu alichukua kanda za mahubiri yetu akapeleka kwa Petro kuisikiliza. Peter developed brain cancer. Petro alikuwa na saratani ya ubongo. They had to operate on his brain. Ili pasa wapasue ubongo wake. They cut his skull. Wakafungua fuvu lake. Open the cranium. Wakafungua mpaka ndani ya ubongo. Cut out the cancer of the brain. Wakakata saratani kutoka kwenye ubongo. Sewed up his skull. Ili wa But a few months later, the cancer began growing. They cut the skull again. Operated again. He kept listening to our tapes. I left that city. He accepted Christ. He believed Jesus was coming again. He believed in the Sabbath. But he was never baptized. Many months later, I came to the city. His mother called me. Pastor Mark, Peter is still alive. But he is dying. The doctor is here. The doctor says he will not live through the day. He's not eaten for two or three weeks. He is thin. He's vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. Pastor, come. I came to the house. Peter was sitting there on a couch. He was vomiting. The eyes were rolling around in his head. His fingernails were yellow. His skin was all yellow. I knelt before him. Held his head. As he vomited in this basin. It was horrible. He looked up at me and said, Pastor, baptize me. Pastor, baptize me. I said, Peter, you're dying. You're dying. I can't take you to the river. Can't take you to the lake. Can't take you to the church. Pastor, Baptize me. I'm going to die. I said, Peter, Jesus loves you. He knows you want to be baptized. The thief on the cross wasn't baptized. And he was dying. He would have been baptized if he got off the cross, Peter. 
Pastor, that's not good enough for me. Pastor, you must baptize me. I said to his mother, fill the bathtub full of water. I stripped Peter to his waist. I picked up the dying boy in my arms. I carried him to the bathroom. There was a large tub of water. I knelt on the floor holding the boy in my arms. And I began to pray. Jesus saved this boy. Jesus saved this boy. I took the boy. Immersed him under the water in the bathtub. When he came out, there was a smile on his face. He said, Pastor, I feel such joy in my heart. I know my sins are forgiven. I dried him off. He said, Mother, Mother, there's such peace in my heart. Such joy in my life. Mother, can I have some crackers to eat? Can I have some tea to drink? He did not die that day. He did not die the next day. He did not die the next day. He lived for a month. Study the Bible. Then just fell asleep in Jesus. And he said to me, There is no reason to wait. Tell people to move ahead and follow Jesus. The message of a dying boy is do not wait. Do not hesitate. Come to Jesus. Would you like to say tonight, Jesus? Whether you've been baptized or not baptized. Would you like to say tonight? Jesus, my whole life is yours. Wherever you are tonight, stand to your feet. And by so doing, say, Jesus, my whole life is yours. If you've been baptized, say, Jesus, I want to recommit my life to you. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. If you have not been baptized, this is your night. Your night to make your decision. Your night to say yes to Jesus. If you've not been baptized by immersion, this is your night to say, Jesus, I want to go into the water. If you've been baptized and you drifted away, let God touch your heart. Let God speak to your life. Come back to him tonight. Tonight our pastors will come. Our Bible workers will come. Our elders will come. They will come here just now. Pastors and elders come. And if you've never come to Jesus in baptism, you come now. If you drifted away, you come wherever you are tonight let Jesus touch you let Jesus touch you hundreds are coming to Christ hundreds are following Christ this is your time you may be up in the stands you come here tonight you may be in the crowd Christ is calling you tonight. There in your church. There in your marketplace. There wherever you are. You come to the screen tonight. Elders and ushers, you can bring others as they come. Some are coming here. Come to Jesus tonight. Come to Jesus tonight. Come to Jesus tonight.
Say, Jesus, I want life tonight. Jesus, I want to be saved tonight. Jesus, I want to live in your kingdom tonight. Jesus, I want to go under the water. Jesus, I want every sin forgiven. Jesus, I want to receive your Holy Spirit. Wherever you are tonight, let God call you. Let God touch you. You may be way in the back tonight. Make your way through the crowd tonight. You may be up in the stands tonight. Young and old, you come. Make your way through the crowd. Come to this altar tonight. You'll find peace here. You'll find strength here. You'll find forgiveness here. You'll find mercy here. If you weigh in the back, you come. You're making your way from way in the back. I see you moving. Just slip right in. Praise God. Here comes some more here. From this side. Come. There, those of you watching via satellite. The elders will meet you. Come to the screen. I'll include you in this prayer. In the marketplace, come. In the prison, come. If you're in a home, just kneel down. If you're in a school, come to the screen. I'll pray over you. Wherever you are, you come as we pray right now. Father in heaven, over a thousand were baptized today. Hundreds more watching this program by satellite have come to the screen tonight. I pray for those 
Ninaombea wale in prisons waliomo katika marketplaces in schools kwenye mashule in churches makanisani in outdoor stadiums katika viwanja vilivyowazi wherever they are tonight kokote walipo leo siku huu may this be a significant decision night for them na huu na uwe usiku wa wenye uamuzi maalum mahususi kwa jamii wherever they are tonight popote walipo jioni put your arms around them encourage their hearts may this decision they've made tonight be an eternal decision and for the many who've come here tonight forward oh lord put your arms around them seal this decision help them look forward to following jesus in baptism lord tonight May not one of us be missed on that great day when Jesus comes. Thank you for those that were baptized today. We praise you for them. Keep them faithful to you endelea kuwatunza katika uaminifu wako hadi pale Yesu anapokuja tena katika jina la Kristo hebu tutume tupeleke nyumbani tukiwa na baraka kutoka mbinguni amen amina now pastor will talk to those that have come forward tonight mchungaji anatupenda kutuelekeza kwa ajili ya wale ambao wamekuja hapa mbele jioni ya leo